Hello white hello nice, I am Ruminous. Today we are doing a review for Mega Man Legends 2, which starts off shortly after 1 and continues the search for the Motherload after Gramps goofs it again and gets another ship demolished. Mega Man, and Mole I guess, have to get the 4 keys to the Motherload to save the ancient deity things that clearly don't like humans, but they promise to trade the knowledge of infinite energy for the keys. Obviously this is a trap and a lie. A full 100% run will generally take 6 to 8 hours on a first playthrough, the game is a bit longer than the first one, but much more linear. The controls are heavily reliable and respond when the buttons are pressed. There will be times where the animations cancel or just refuse to listen like my nephew at bedtime, but they are seldom. Most actions on the ground can be cancelled and changed at a moment's notice, allowing the player to switch between defense and offense. Death is still obnoxious, taking multiple loading screens to get back into the action. Many jumps in the ruins require perfection to avoid severe pain, which is difficult at times with the clunky controls and resistant camera. The camera controls are quite sluggish and can be hard to accurately shift to proper location due to their lack of speed and imprecise movement. There is no planned latency in the base controls, which makes the dodge roll actually useful in this game. Some of the special weapons will require a buildup and recovery, making it a risk versus reward for spamming the shining laser, but makes most of the other special weapons useless, as they will miss or not do enough damage compared to the buster. The roll, shoot, and run actions are heavily frequent in the level design, with the jumping and platforming hardly necessary. The walk is never used in the main story, but is there. It's it exists. The actions are all useful throughout the game. Jumping, despite being mostly ignored in level design, is vital in dodging most attacks. Walking is useful for sauntering into a room full of enemies and getting noticed anyway, so absolutely garbage. Control is never taken away from the player except for cutscenes, which can be skipped immediately. The player can choose to revisit any area and leave main missions after realizing that they forgot to buy equipment again and getting slaughtered by the jellyfish. Mega Man moves at a decent speed to get through most rooms within a minute. Analog sticks were implemented into this game, thank all the gods, and the character can actually move like a toddler with developing motor skills. There are still tank-like or stiff movements past 45 degrees, so it's not perfect, but not painful. Enemies move much faster in this game, and often too fast to actually maneuver around, which can be a major problem. The view is third person fixed behind the character. There's enough to see the crab infestation in front, and the incoming lobsters from the side. The camera can be shifted in a direction, but is slow, and has native pilot controls for whatever sinister reason that developers love to do this. The growth is pretty steady throughout the game. Enemies will gain more health and damage, status effects become more devastating. The major ruins have different themes and puzzles, although the story is stale until the last section of the game. Despite the change in scenery, the ruins are all extremely linear with hardly any platforming, just run forward, shoot, solve puzzle to unlock door. As to why the platforming is relegated to very short sections with lava pits to kill you is a giant waste, and a huge step back from the design of the first game. The flow in the gameplay is steady with some random spikes or dips that are acceptable. The game has a general formula but will break things up at times and will require different puzzles for the motherload keys. With the enemies being faster, more agile, and stronger, the player cannot just simply cheese the strafe strap for the whole game while taking a nap. Although this adds to some challenge, it does at times make evading attacks very difficult and enemies hit with the force of a bulldozer for some reason. The game is decently difficult but oftentimes leads into frustration, especially as the fire drains my health faster than Mighty Number no. 9 did to the favor of Mega Man fans. There is decent sustainability for fans of Mega Man but struggles with the story and by that I mean there's practically no story to drive the player. The ruins are nice but the NPCs don't grow or have anything interesting to say, making the overworld practically useless and boring. The gameplay is good enough to capture attention but lacks the staying power for most players. The story revolves around El Dorado Basically, the mother load is a legend where whoever finds it will solve the energy crisis with infinite amounts of crystals. What these stories always forget is that wars will ensue due to the greed of humans. Anyway, the story ends with telling how Mega Man is capable of destroying a giant T-Rex without much of an issue and adds onto the weird stuff at the end of one. I think the final bits of the story are amazing in terms of how insane it is, but I wish the first 75% of the game had anything revolving around it or anything at all. The sounds in the game are exaggerated and sci-fi but fit nicely with the themes and setting of the game. The sound design is beautiful in that the enemies are all unique and can be detected immediately. The music is strange, it's not bad, but it's not very memorable or what I would consider fitting to the area. The sounds are sometimes louder than needed but don't clash with the music. 
The mechanics are decently reliable, the ruins have a status effect, which are absolute annoyances, the player will need to unlock something to get the key, there will be a boss at the end, and roll does nothing to help. Each overworld area will have a pirate attack, and there will be an optional ruin for money. In the later ruins, there will be platforming sections requiring precision or death. The jumps aren't hard, just punishing. And there's no build-up of previous experiences to practice this. The gimmicks, like the ice and water, require special shoes or just frustrating movement for no reason. The game could have these gimmicks but not be so punishing that not having the shoes makes the ruin impossible. The manipulatives in this game are all upgrades, most of which can be changed or removed. There are armors and barriers for the status effects, as well as upgrades for the speed, power, range, and rapid of the main buster and special weapons. Energy exists as an upgrade, but does nothing, and most of the special weapons can't be upgraded because Roll apparently uses gold in her tools and needs more money than even the Motherload has. There is a hidden manipulative where Mega Man can be evil or righteous, but is so subtle and useless that it needed to be revised. These systems are all combat based, where the shots magnetically attract to enemies, Mega Man will get invulnerability after a beatdown, and special weapons will generally stagger the enemies. There should be something to help attract money from farther away, as the robots are far more aggressive in this game and prevent you from getting the money most of the time. The detrimentals are likewise combat based. Status effects slow the character and drain health and special juice like nobody's business, enemies will stun like Mega Man, and most bosses will activate action replay to get invincibility while still attacking. The status effects are a nice addition, but far too devastating and take too long to dissipate. The ruins are extremely linear, but there are still some guidings with color and blinking lights to help orient the player. The surface world will have roads, rubble, and random landmarks to help orient the player for the major areas. Most of the controls are explained, but there are still some intuitives with the purpose of special weapons, the specifics of each status effect, and how to gain or lose reputation. The intuitive learning is weak and not structured well at all to actually teach these mechanics unless the player is really paying attention, thus leaning on explicit teaching and dialogue way more often than needed. The setting, enemies, and powers are all logistically explained within the universe. I still don't know how Mega Man's arm can handle a 30 ton cannon, but the story explains that he is the ultimate warrior, so it clearly makes sense. There are points with Sarah and Rose's parents that require some extreme suspension of disbelief due to how ridiculous everyone around them acts to respond to their stupid actions. The different areas have their own cities which are bland and have no life of their own besides the fill in space. The world feels empty and the people around have nothing interesting going on which is exactly what people want out of an RPG. The tutorial is a good mix between implicit and explicit instruction for the base game. The opening scene teaches the special weapon for 3 minutes and quickly becomes tedious. The first ruin area then teaches interacting with people or items, upgrades, robots, and the ruins implicitly with some varied explicit explanations. The initial area could be way better and there should be dialogue or options for the main actions if the players get stuck, but also more room to experiment and have opportunities to test the various controls and mechanics out. The UI of the game is annoyingly on the select button instead of the pause menu like every other game, but the menus themselves are logical and concise. The UX of the game is likewise good with the different colors for enemies, the ruins, and the main character. There's plenty of empty space in the menus, and the text is white against a navy background for easy legibility. The background, foreground, and set pieces are easy to distinguish. The graphics are low poly and very blocky, despite its age it actually looks okay, although many of the humans are unsettling with some extreme hips and very swollen hands. All enemies, items, and locations are easy to distinguish, even from afar. The animations are fluid, clean, and sensible, with the enemy's actions clearly telegraphed. The style is realistic with anime influences, particularly in the face, and it can create some unsettling faces and animations as they cater to an exaggerated style. There is decent accessibility, even though there are no options for text, most important dialogue is voiced. Sound is an important component in the game, especially since there is plenty of mist or fog, but no real help for the hearing impaired. The game is generally fast paced, but there are plenty of spots for players with reaction impairments to wait and calm down. There are enough color differences to help out with those with color blindness, although the buster upgrades are small and may be hard to tell for those with dysgraphia or visual impairment.
For final score, I give the gameplay control a 45 out of 60, gameplay aspects 41 out of 60, the story a 2 out of 5, sound 6 out of 10, mechanics 46 out of 70, tutorial 7 out of 10, UI UX 8 out of 10, visuals 15 out of 20, and accessibility 3 out of 5. Overall, I give the game a 3 out of 5. Legends 2 is a fun game that refines all the gameplay aspects that were brutal in the first game, but then lacks all the charm and intrigue. For an RPG, there's hardly any interactivity with the world, giant open spaces, and people give generic one-line responses about their lives. The main story is actually interesting, but is put on hold for nearly the entire game, and the new villains disappear just as quickly as they show up. I do think that Legends 2 is a decent game, but is like Windows 11. It looks prettier, it doesn't actually do anything different than Windows 10, and at times is actually worse. Somehow. How did you figure- how did you do that? Thanks everybody for watching, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified of future videos. If you have any comments on things that you think that I missed, got wrong, or things that I'm inaccurate about, or things that you want to expand on, please put them in the comment section below and we can continue this discourse and review. But until next time, Wale Te Omnis.